All right, my friends, good morning, good morning. How is everyone today? I hope you're all doing well, and I welcome you here to the very first stream of my new consecutive streaming week. Today is Wednesday, the 18th of August, 2021, and I am DSP, and I am here live on the stream on DSP Gaming on YouTube. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're all having a good week so far. I know this is hump day for many, so hopefully this is a, uh, a stream that will get you through that tough time of the week for many people. I hope everyone's doing well. Yesterday was my day off from streaming. And it was a hell of a day, <laughs> to say the least. I knew it was going to be. Yesterday, I knew it was going to be a hectic day because I had a ton of stuff to do in a short period of time. I had multiple appointments. I had lots of shopping that I needed to do for around the house as well as for Jasper Kitty. And uh, it was hectic. We were up and about. We were left and right, up and down, driving all across the state, basically. Um... But it was still fun. It was a cool day. Here in Washington State, the temperatures have dramatically dipped. We went from 90 plus degree weather, which is unseasonably warm, down to like 60 something degree weather. Right now it's 63 degrees outside. So actually my air conditioner will barely need to even be on today because it's actually only in the 70s in my office, which is different. It was in the 80s and 90s in my office just a couple days ago. Okay. <clears throat> this is good because... When I'm comfortable in the office streaming, it means that I can have more fun playing games with you guys rather than sitting here sweating it out and feeling like crap, you know? Um, and I'm happy about that, that uh, that finally the weather seems to be turning, and it looks like for the whole next week it may be around this, so that's good. Hopefully we've seen the end of our heat waves of the summer this year. That would be nice. Um, so welcome. I hope that all of you had a good day yesterday away from my streams, whether you got caught up with all of my stuff here on the DSP Gaming channel on YouTube or... You went off and did other stuff. I just certainly hope that you were safe and happy and had fun, okay? And now I welcome you back. I welcome you back to the streams. And I say thank you for chilling with me here today as I return back for a six straight days. What a six days this is going to be, my friends. So first of all, let's just go ahead and let's get the elephant out of the room because he smells. He hasn't bathed in a while. I'm tired of stinking it or smelling his stink here. Um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, as of today, we have new incentives to tip on the stream. You guys have directly asked me over the last month to two months to add more variety to my tips, goals, rewards because I've been telling you guys I need help with tips. You know, And you said, well, that's great, but can you do something different rather than the same thing every day? Can we have variety to the tip skulls? Yes. And I will absolutely say this. Thank you to the, the viewer and fan who actually donated a Amazon credits to me. Because they did that, they gave me some flexibility to do a few things that I would like to do. Including buy some new hats for the stream. Okay? And I really appreciate that because having that flexibility, being able to improve the streams is something that's important to me. And because financially things have been so tight for me lately, I haven't really had a chance to do anything because um, I'm barely paying my bills, you know. So thank you to the fan who did that, all right. So as of today, we have three new hats that are eligible if we hit the tips goal on the stream, which is $150. Keep in mind, I do two streams, so that's two chances to see new hats out of the three. Now, actually, while I was ordering these hats, another viewer behind the scenes contacted me and said i would like to donate a hat to your streams and i said well coincidentally i just ordered three so what were you thinking that way you know we're not talking about the same thing and we went back and forth talking about some hats and, and we determined that one would be pretty silly and that hat is also ordered and supposed to be delivered tomorrow supposedly okay so as of today we have three new hats eligible all right and then as of tomorrow as long as this thing gets delivered we should have four new hats eligible all right. So you may be saying, well, how's this going to work? Let me explain for those of you who maybe are newcomers or maybe you haven't been around for a bit and you're wondering what I'm talking about. So every day on stream, I have a goal of tips that I try to raise because I am an independent content creator. I don't have sponsorships or partnerships with anyone. Uh, I make my money on crowdfunding on my streams. So it's you guys contributing during the streams. That's literally how I make a living. Okay. And tipping is the best way to contribute because tips I get immediately and I can put towards important things. Like just this week, there's three big bills that have to clear uh, by the weekend. And then on this weekend, I'll be getting paid by YouTube. And then I can actually pay my mortgage and other stuff. Um, but it's your tips that pay 
for that kind of stuff, okay? So, that's why tips are so important to me. I mean, yes, I appreciate memberships. I appreciate Super Chats. Those all help in the long term. And the more that the channel grows in that regard, the closer we're going to be back to how it was when I was on Twitch as a full-time streamer. It's going to take a while, but I have a feeling over the next few months we're going to see an increase in viewership and an increase in support in different ways, and we can get closer to how things were back when I was full-time on Twitch, okay? Seems like a long time ago at this point, quite frankly. Um, anyway, since tips are so important, I set up reward tiers, all right, for those who tip me. If we raise $50 in total tips today, I will put on my pair of gunner glasses, okay? That's tier one reward. If I put, if I raise $100 in tips on this stream, all right, I put on a vest of your choice. And today, since it is the first streaming day of the week, we'll hit the reset button and we'll bring back all the most popular vests available, including the red, the platinum, the denim, and the gold. Those are the four most popular vests per your your requests so let's reset and have them all eligible for today if we hit 100 bucks in tips i will put up a poll and you guys will vote on what vest you want to see me wear today all right now here's the new thing if we raise 150 dollars in tips all right i will put up a poll of four hat types obviously you know the cowboy but you don't know the other three new hats and to avoid spoilers all I'm going to do is put up the colors of the hats. I'm not going to tell you the type of hat or whatever. I'm just going to put up cowboy and then three color selections. And you will be able to select one of those. And then you'll see that hat for the very first time. I'll wear it for the rest of the stream. Okay? And so we're going to do this every stream moving forward. If we raise $150 in tips, which is the total amount, you guys get to pick a hat for me to wear on that stream. Okay? So as of today... The choices will be the cowboy hat and the three new ones. As of tomorrow, if the new hat arrives today, then it'll be all four new hats, and the cowboy hat will actually be out of the running. Why? Because we've worn the cowboy hat every single effing day that I've hit the tips goal for the past many months. And it's boring at this point. It's the same hat we've seen over and over. The, the cowboy hat used to be special because it used to be the hat I only wear when we do my Q&A show, Ask the King. So people love to see it come back because it kind of meant something to them. It had a nostalgia factor. A hat that I've been wearing over 10 years in a certain video. And then seeing it in every video kind of loses its effectiveness. Okay? So, once we have the four new hats, then the cowboy hat will be retired for the daily streams. I'm not saying it has to be retired permanently. I'm just saying for the near future, I think that makes sense. And then if you guys ever want to see it come back and bring it back into the running, we can do that. Okay? Sound good? So, that's how we're doing it today. $150 raised. It's time to vote on a hat, and you guys will be surprised by the appearance of a new hat on the stream for the very first time. Now, once all the hats have been revealed, I'm sure, you know, you guys will be interested and have certain favorites and stuff like that. Um, and I'm also open to suggestions for other new hats and things, because obviously... I have so many vests at this point that we rotate them around. Having hats to do that would also make sense. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to be wearing hats that aren't really hats. And what I mean by that, allow me to explain, because some people have made some of the most ridiculous suggestions I've ever heard. Such as, why don't you wear your Sonic hat? The Sonic hat is a costume. It's a giant stuffed animal, essentially, you're wearing on your head. It's incredibly uncomfortable. It makes you overheat, and it doesn't sit on the head properly. The only time I ever wore it was because I was being incredibly silly playing a Sonic 06 playthrough. So I wore it to be ridiculous. But outside of that, I've never worn it because it's not comfortable. It's not meant for an extended wear, and certainly it's not meant to wear every day on a stream. Same thing people said, why don't you wear your Yoshi Halloween costume from a few years back? Because it's a giant fucking stuffed animal on your head, it's not comfortable. It's not meant for extended use. The hats that we have for the streams are actual hats meant to be worn by humans for extended periods of time. They're comfortable and they're designed to comfortably sit on the human head, unlike those costumes. <clears throat> so if you're going to suggest something, don't suggest I dress up in a full body fucking banana outfit because it ain't going to happen. It's stupid. No, that's not happening. I'm going to be wearing things that are comfortable for streaming. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So it's that simple. And I hope you guys understand, all right? So, that's the deal for today. I hope that sounds good to you, and I hope that's going to uh, add some, 
you know, incentive for something new and different to happen today. Something refreshing on the stream. Let's talk about today's streams. All right, first of all, my first gameplay stream of the day is Fallout New Vegas continuing on. Currently, we are trying to do the end game follower missions. So far, we have done Veronica's, we've done Cassidy's, we have done Eddie's, we've done, I believe, Rex's. And then we did, uh, recently, Raul and Boone's. Okay, so all of their missions have been completed. That just leaves Arcade Ganon and Lily. And once those are done, essentially I have done pretty much everything that I'm seeking to do in the game before we do the final DLC, which is called Lonesome Road, and then we finish the game. Okay? So currently, I'm talking with Mr. House, who just told me to go kill the Brotherhood in the plot line. I could do that. But I'm not sure at what point we need to trigger for Arcade Ganon to finally say, hey, it's time to do my loyalty mission. Because his loyalty mission, arguably, in my opinion, is the best one in the game. First of all, it's a very interesting plot that I enjoy. I remember doing it repeatedly in the past. But in addition to that, I actually remember he gives you power armor training when you're done. When you got power armor, you're a fucking badass. Basically, you take insanely reduced damage. And I need that because I have been... I guess you could argue I'm a glass cannon. The entire game, I deal tons of damage, but man, do I take damage because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. So, I'm pumping healing items constantly. And it's been an issue. This is the only time I've ever played Fallout where healing items have been an issue the entire playthrough. I accumulate a ton, and then I use them all, and I can't get enough back to kind of replenish because I'm losing so much health constantly. Okay? <clears throat> So, <laughs> oh, actually, this is pretty cool. I just got an email from the person who, were he who was helping me with side quests. And uh, basically, they just sent me a listing of the remaining significant side quests left if I want to do them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine. There's ten significant side quests left in the game. Ten. Perhaps we will do those before we finish this up. Okay? Huh. Cool. Alright, thank you for that. The person who just sent me that, thank you so much for that, because I will definitely be using that as a guide. Um, what I'm hoping is that we could definitely do the Arcade Ganon stuff today. It's very important to get the power armor. And then... I don't remember Lily's final side quests at all. I don't even remember how to trigger them. I might have to look it up if, if we can even do them. Because sometimes you, you, you run yourself into a corner and then you can't do it anymore. So I guess we'll see. All right, but anyway, good stuff. I'm very excited. I hope you guys are too for a chill stream of Fallout New Vegas today. Another three hours of open world Mojave Wasteland gameplay as we head into the end game. Because after, like I said, after we do these follower quests and maybe a few of these side quests that are left... Um, then we're going to do Lonesome Road, and then that's it. Then it's the finale of the game. Siding with Mr. House, which is interesting. I've never done that before. So, I guess we'll see what happens. Okay? <laughs> All right. Later tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing something I haven't done in a long time. We're actually doing a stream of PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I've not played this game on an actual stream of it for years. All right? We actually tried it out in a Game Pass stream a week or two ago. And surprisingly enough, the game actually played well uh, because on Xbox Series X, it actually runs at full 60 frames per second and the controls are responsive. The controls still suck, but they're responsive. So you guys have requested that I basically play it because I haven't done Battle Royale in so long and you guys enjoy the fact that the first half is just grabbing resources and the like and we can interact and talk a lot. During that first half. And then you guys also like the suspense of when it finally gets down to like the top 30. And now people are actually sneaking up on each other. Killing each other and trying to survive. So that should be fun later tonight. 6.45pm Pacific Time. We'll see how it goes. If it goes well. Then I can actually do it maybe, you know, every once in a while. If it ends up being a dud, that's fine. We don't have to do it ever again. But that's the beauty of flexibility. Is that we can try it out. See if it works as a stream. You know, it used to work as a stream years ago. But maybe it won't work anymore. Maybe Battle Royale really has played its course out and you guys don't really care that much anymore. 
let's see what happens later tonight. Okay? And go from there. Cool. Tomorrow is our first new release of the week. It is the release of 12 minutes on the Xbox Series X under Game Pass. An incredibly unique game where you're stuck in a room. It's a married couple, apparently, who have issues with each other. And then a hitman comes in out of nowhere and murders them. But then it's like Groundhog Day, where once you die, you revive and you live the scenario over. And you continuously keep searching for clues, dialogue options, and things to unearth what's really going on. Who is the hitman? Why is he trying to murder you? Uh, what is really going on behind the scenes with this couple? And apparently it's an incredibly unique game that's never really been done before. So I'm very excited to try this out, especially because the voice acting cast is outstanding. James McAvoy... Um, and, uh, why am I having a brain fart? I am having a brain fart about the voice acting cast. But basically, it's really good. I think Daisy Ridley is the wife, and who the hell... Why can't I remember the name of the freaking assassin? Oh my god, he's such a famous actor, and I've loved him in games before, and I can't remember his name. He played the Green Goblin. Willem Dafoe, thank you. I I got the cobwebs in my head coming back from brain. <laughs> Willem Dafoe is going to be the highlight of this game, I feel. Seriously, he's such a good actor and voice actor, and such a unique voice. I can't wait to hear him in this game. So I'm excited for tomorrow. I hope you guys are too. Tomorrow night, we're going to finish up my playthrough of Last Stop, the most zany effing choose-your-own-adventure game I've ever played in my life. Seriously, the last stream went so nuts I can't even imagine how this thing's going to end tomorrow night. I seriously... <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past them. At this point, the game is so wild. Alright? So I hope you'll join me for that Thursday night. And then on Friday, it's another new game premiere. It's the first Ghost of Tsushima DLC expansion. The Ghost of Ikishima. Where you go to Iki Island. And apparently there's all new challenges. All new plot. It's about 20 hours long from reports. Which is pretty neat. It means that we'll be playing it a good amount of streams. As you know, I like to really thoroughly investigate uh, when I play games like that. The first game I did, I platinum it. I did absolutely everything. Every fox, every shrine, everything. So, I'm excited for this DLC and the return of Ghost of Tsushima on Friday. Especially because we just flew over Tsushima when we did Microsoft Flight Simulator the other day. Which was nice to see it from an aerial view. To see that actually the island is very similar to the map they used in the game. So, I hope you guys are excited for Ghost of Ikishima. On Friday. Friday night will be the usual weekly session of old school throwback Street Fighter fun. And then this weekend we'll be alternating between 12 minutes and Ghost of Ikishima. The night streams will be a good variety too. We'll have some more Hades continuing on. I'm really liking Hades, by the way. Like, more so than I thought I would. Like, I think it's probably an incredibly good game that I actually feel bad that I missed out on. It's just a shame that all these indie games kind of come out and they, they're off my radar. And I'm so happy that it was under Game Pass that I was able to check it out because I really like this game. Um, and then we're going to do more Microsoft Flight Simulator on Sunday night. And this week we're doing some big stuff. We're starting off with Buenos Aires, Argentina. But then after that we're going to be doing like Disneyland and, uh, and Universal Studios or maybe Disney World and Universal Studios and other touristy stuff. And then we're going to be doing Seattle, which people have been asking me to do for a long time. We're going to be doing actual Seattle. I'll fly over Seattle and show you the areas that I know. I'll be like, oh, you know... Here's uh, the Space Needle, here's Pike Place Market, and, and here's the Pacific Science Center, and yada, yada, yada. I can show you all that that I know about from the air, which is really neat. Um, so that's cool. And then, uh, I'm not actually sure what I'm doing on Monday yet. You know, we're getting pretty far ahead of ourselves, but I think I actually had written out the entire uh, schedule. So that we will have new stuff literally every day and balance that with, with the ongoing playthroughs. It's going to be a great week. Like, really, it's going to be a great week. I'm very much looking forward to this week. I know we're going to have people coming here to check out the new games. Um, and, you know, it's just going to be a fun time. And I hope that you guys uh, will join me all week long if you can. Okay? <laughs> all right. Good stuff. Now, outside of all that, um, you know, there's new stuff coming up soon. More new games. Psychonauts 2 next week. September's chock full of games. October, November, and... Uh, you know, I hope that you guys will continue to join me on the streams for daily new stuff, man. It's going to be fun. Now, we're, uh, basically, this week is kind of opening the floodgates. This is the week where literally every week there should be something new and or we're continuing on with something new. So, if you have been missing out on the streams recently because you've been like, man, there's really not, not much going on. This is where that's going to change. This is where things are going to flip and there's going to be a lot more new release style content. 
coming to the streams soon and starting tomorrow, you know. And that's good because I feel that we'll bring some new viewers to the streams who maybe have not been coming by recently because they've been saying everything I'm doing is a downtime playthrough or whatever. Um, and hopefully we'll see increases in, in memberships and things like that. You know, my goal for this month is to hit 275 concurrent memberships. We were getting good progress and actually getting close to that. We got all the way up to 241, and all of a sudden it started reducing. And what that means is that people who were who were members didn't renew for some odd reason. I don't know why they wouldn't have renewed because, quite frankly, <laughs> there really wasn't anything that I did last month that I feel would have urged someone to become a member and then be like, oh, I don't want to be a member anymore. It's the opposite. Like, things picked up. I started doing Xbox Game Pass content constantly, so it was new content instead of the same old playthroughs, and we're heading into a more exciting part of the year. So I would hope with the new stuff now, this is going to convince some people who maybe have stayed away from becoming members to maybe be members. Because you get so many benefits from being a channel member. You know, the highlighted name in chat, uh, a cool channel crown next to your name to show how long you've been a supporter. You get all, all my emotes, 19 and growing. And you also don't have to abide by the slow mode rules in the chat. You can talk as much as you want. So there's many benefits. And it's cheaper. It's absolutely cheaper to be a member here on YouTube than it ever was on Twitch. I lowered the price so that it would be even more tempting to become a member here on YouTube. So I hope you will consider it uh, if you have not yet, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I've already stated, I'm an independent content creator. That means I don't have a, a sponsorship or a partnership with anyone. I'm a man on to myself here. I, I feel like I've always said I, kind of, I feel like I'm a man on an island. I'm, all, I'm on my own. But I'm okay with that. I enjoy putting out my style of content. Um, for 13 years, I've done my own thing. I've never had many or any collaborations. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of do my own thing. And a lot of the times, it shoots me in the foot. Because there's been some, you know, things that I, I don't do. I don't do a lot of the things a lot of other popular content creators do. That's for sure. I stayed away from the trends of the norm. I never made it big. I never blew up to be, you know, giant purposely because I didn't want to. I wanted to be myself. I didn't want to sell out or lose who I was as a person or a content creator. And that's kind of where I, why I am where I am rather than being some giant popular guy, you know? But I'm totally okay with that because I enjoy doing what I do. I enjoy having the size of audience that I do because it means that I can be personal with all of you and actually have meaningful conversation and respond to your contributions and say thank you individually Rather than being flooded with so much that I just can't keep up with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, that being said, my friends. Um, I hope that you enjoy the content as much as I do. And I hope that you will support it if you do. Because that is literally how I make my living. I'm crowdfunded. Like I said, I don't have income from other sources. It's you guys supporting the streams. That's how I make my living. Alright? So, you can become a channel member as we've already discussed. That's one way to support the channel. You can do a super chat or a super sticker. These are ways that you can contribute through YouTube itself. And if you do that, you get a highlighted message in chat. I'll give it a shout out as long as it's a positive message and it's not something meant to insult or derail the stream. Those help me long term. I really appreciate it. Honestly, super chats have picked up over the last month. I've noticed a, a increase in the amount of super chats I receive on a stream. And I really appreciate that because long term, that's building this to channel. That's helping me get back to where I was when I was a full-time Twitch streamer, okay? So thank you for that. But as of today, since we do have the new hat goals in effect for tips, I would assume today the focus for people who are contributing will probably be tips because they're going to want to see uh, the new hats on stream. At least you would think, maybe not, who knows? But you would think I added something new that people have been asking for for like a month and a half. You would think people would be you know, incentivized to want to see them, <laughs> you know? So if you are interested in tipping to support the channel, all right, you can check the description of the stream and it'll have a link. And that link is how you can tip. Or you just type exclamation point tip into the stream chat and it'll bring up the link, all right? As I've already stated, if you, if you tip me, I will give you a shout out to say thanks. If you're the top tipper, I'll put you up on the leaderboard for notoriety purposes. If we raise $50 in tips, I'll put on my Gunner glasses. At $100, you guys will get to vote on the type of vest that I'll wear today, and all the popular choices are available today. And if we raise the tips goal of $150, you can vote on the new hat that I'll be wearing live here on stream. Okay? So all good stuff all around. 
I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited too. We'll see how it goes today. And uh, hopefully we can see some new stuff, exciting stuff on the stream. Fair enough? All right, before we get to shout-outs, for those who contributed already, because we actually have one person who contributed, <laughs> um, a couple new stories today. All right? First off, the bad news continues for game publishers. As you guys haven't noticed, recently in the last couple of years, a lot of game publishers are being called out for their bad behaviors. In fact, just recently, in the last month, we had Activision Blizzard being completely exposed after being sued by the state of California for mistreatment of its employees. Uh, you know, rampant sexual harassment and abuse in the company, unfair and unequal treatment of employees based on gender, and uh, many people have been shuffled around and or left the company in the last month in particular because of the bad behaviors, okay? But we all forget that last year and the year before it was Ubisoft who was in that bad light because Ubisoft had basically been accused of exactly the same kind of bad behaviors. In fact, some of the stuff we had heard out of the company was ludicrous. Like, a big wig at the company, head of a project, said, oh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey can't possibly just have a female protagonist because people don't buy games where females are the protagonists. So we have to make it so that there's an option to choose either a male or a female because, man, that game will not sell if it's just a female lead. What? <laughs> uh, someone's stupid. Someone obviously doesn't know how to study game history and or sales history to see that there's entire franchises based off of fucking female leads. What about Tomb Raider? What about Horizon just recently? What about The Last of Us 2? One of the best-selling games of all time. You fucking dunce. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Then again, I guess The Last of Us 2 came out after. But still, you get my point. This guy is a complete sexist asshole, right? And people like that apparently were in charge of the company and were doing all kinds of messed up stuff in internally to the employees, okay? So the reason I'm bringing this up this morning is because another news story is hit. You guys may have heard of a little game called Skull and Bones. Or maybe you didn't. I wouldn't be shocked if many of you don't even remember this game anymore because it was announced, like, so long ago. I want to I wanna argue it was announced at, like, E3 2014 or something crazy like this. So this is supposed to be a game that's pirates, okay? And everyone was like, oh, so what they're doing is it looks like they liked... Assassin's Creed 4 was so popular. They don't want to throw away their whole naval combat engine even though they're moving on the new Assassin's Creed games. Likely those games won't have the naval combat anymore. So instead what we're going to do... We're going to take all that pirates and naval combat, okay? And we're going to push that into a new franchise called Skull and Bones. At least, that's what was speculated back then. Now, what ended up happening was, Skull and Bones apparently went into development hell. No, we don't know what happened with the game. It's never come out. We've heard multiple times that they've scrapped the game and started from scratch. And that naval combat that we thought would never be in Assassin's Creed again ended up being in the last several games. <laughs> like, it literally was in both Origins and Odyssey. I don't believe it was in the last one. Well, there was naval combat in uh, Valhalla, but it was nothing like the previous games. It was just in a boat, like a little rowboat or whatever, longboat. It wasn't like full-scale naval combat like you had in the previous Assassin's Creed games. They finally kind of phased it out. But, yeah, basically, this game essentially is like in development hell. Now, for those who don't know, the development of Skull and Bones was led by the development team in Singapore. Okay, a Singaporean branch of Ubisoft. I'm not exactly sure if the Singaporean branch has ever pumped out a full-fledged game before. I could be wrong there, but I don't remember ever playing one from Ubisoft Singapore. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, in the last 24 hours, the news has hit. The Singaporean government is now investigating Ubisoft Singapore. Because guess what happened? The same fucking thing again. They have been mass-reported... For internal abuse of employees. Again. Uh, like it wasn't bad enough. That the company already was in hot water. Over the last two years. This studio now is also being included. Basically saying hey don't forget about us. We also have been all mistreated over here. And no one's doing anything about it. They had to complain to the Singaporean government. To get attention on this. I would love to say that I'm shocked and surprised. And appalled at this. But at this point. This is seeming to become the norm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it certainly seems to me like this is uh, going to be something commonplace now moving forward. And I'm not okay with that, you know? I don't want to be buying games from studios that treat people like shit. I don't want to support that kind of practice. I don't want to line the pockets of these bigwig fucks 
who think that it's okay to have all their employees doing fucked up things under them and they can just ignore it. And yet they take home millions to billions of dollars in payments every year as if they did something worthwhile. You know, Bobby Kotick over there, fucking Activision Blizzard, taking home unprecedented amounts of money while all his employees are basically mistreating each other underneath him. And he has no repercussions for this. Same thing at Ubisoft. Yves Guillermo, or whatever the fuck his name is, he has the same situation where everyone under him was fucking around. And he says, oh, I didn't know about any of it. All the people who I put in charge really misused my trust and I feel so betrayed. Yet he remains in power and takes t millions of dollars a year. Like, dude, this was your job. You're the CEO. It's your job to know what's going on under you. The fact you didn't means you're a terrible CEO and you should fucking step down and have someone who's competent step up because if anything, this just proves that you don't have control over your company and you're not the man for the job. So here we are over a year later after supposedly internal changes at Ubisoft have fixed the culture and now we're being told that Ubisoft Singapore is just as bad. So fuck him. I mean that. This guy does not deserve to have the power he has if he's not really doing anything. Fuck him. Throw him the fuck out. Get someone in there who's going to actually lead your company to do the right thing. Not that everyone who works at gaming uh, developers now has to be massively abused, underpaid, overworked, massive mandatory crunch, can't have a personal life outside of the job because you have to work so much. Oh, by the way, when you were at work, you're sexually harassed. Oh, by the way, now you get passed over for promotions based on favoritism and sexual preference and shit. It's like, fuck you. We, a lot of other in, uh, industries oh, had this issue, okay? A lot of other industries had this issue before. But they grew out of it 10, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that, like, should happen when something is in its infancy. Ladies and gentlemen, video games are the biggest form of entertainment, the biggest medium of entertainment in the world. Why is, is, it, why is it, like, fucking... It feels like, you know, kid, kiddie shit. This is something that happens on a schoolyard. Schoolyard bullying and mistreatment. This shouldn't be happening at billion-dollar companies. And why the fuck does anyone think it's okay for this to continue to happen, that you keep the people in charge who allowed it to happen? Throw them out. There's a board of directors. There's a fucking investors who could throw these motherfuckers out if they wanted to. Why do you keep them in power? Is it because you're greedy? Because that's the truth. These people are making money hand over fist. Ubisoft is a profitable, profitable company. Activision Blizzard is an incredibly profitable company. So who cares if the employees are mistreated? Keep those people in power because they're lining our pockets with dividend payments, right? No. Fuck you. Do the right thing. If I were rich and I owned stock in these companies, I'd be very upset. Alas, it's not to be. So instead, I just rant and rave on my streams and no one cares. <laughs> so there you go. To me, or to, to, to Eve's Guillermo, Darkseid Phil is nothing but a fart out of his ass. You know, he doesn't care what I say. <laughs> he ain't gonna do shit. You know, he doesn't care about I me. Mean, I have no impact anything on the company, but I just think these people need to be held accountable for the heinous things that happen under their watch. It's just my take, okay? Now, we have another interesting news story that, sadly, I hate to say, <clears throat> kind of upsetting. And it's another situation where in the games industry... <sighs> really has been doing this in the last 10 years, and I don't agree with this practice, but yet it seems to always, uh, it seems to always happen in the games industry. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you heard the news. There was a big announcement yesterday on my day off. Notice emphasis on my day off, because this shit always happens on my day off, so I have to talk about it the day after, okay? <laughs> uh, so... Ladies and gentlemen, Epic Games. You might have heard of them. You might have heard this little, there's a little indie studio. They haven't made much before in the past, so maybe you didn't hear of them. Epic Games, you know, <laughs> company that every once in a while they decide to make a game and it goes virally popular. Okay, obviously I'm joking. Epic Games is the makers of Fortnite who, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Epic Games made good games before Fortnite. They did. But Fortnite really... Was there, I don't know, I, I think like someone at the company had to deal with the devil. Because Fortnite, in reality, was not supposed to be what it was. Fortnite was actually supposed to be a tower defense game where you protect your base from zombies. Get it? There's a fort that gets attacked at night and you defend it. Fortnite? That's what the name of the game means. Okay? But what happened was, uh, 
they changed the, the game and copied everyone else who was doing Battle Royale, primarily in the PC market. Because at that time, it was games like PUBG or um, Daisy. Not Daisy. What was the other one? There was two or three three games that were doing this Battle Royale formula. They had all kind of copied each other on PC. And this became a genre that was very popular. Fortnite was the first game that said, we want to take that to console and make it free to play. By the way, our, cartoon, our cartoony graphics just may attract an audience that hasn't been interested in the Battle Royale formula up to now. Okay? And essentially, they decided they would focus on Battle Royale and see how it pans out. They would still have their, their tower defense slash, you know, uh, zombie defense gameplay in the game, but you have to pay for it, while the free-to-play version would be the Battle Royale. Well... Typical case about right place, right time. Because the Battle Royale portion of Fortnite picked up, became the main focus of the game. Millions of children around the world, I will emphasize that. Millions of children around the world got hooked on it. Especially because of its cartoony graphics and the ability to buy so many ridiculous in-game skins and outfits that were all cartoony and silly for children. Okay? Um... The tower defense mode got forgotten. They don't even talk about it anymore. They act like it never existed. And because so many content creators jumped on the bandwagon of Fortnite, they saw dollar signs in their eyes. They said, hey, if I jump and play Fortnite, since so many kids are into it, I could become popular and make a ton of money. I mean, I don't care if the game's good or not. I'll just play it and try to attract as many children to my content as possible, and I'll make big money. And for a good two, three years there, that's exactly what happened. Major content creators were made playing Fortnite, okay? I personally hate that formula. I've told you guys many times, I don't like it when people are disingenuous with what they're doing as content creators. And the fact that so many content creators jumped on this Fortnite bandwagon to make money off of the backs of children, which is literally what it was. Because let's be honest here. We knew all along the primary viewers of Fortnite content were kids. We know that. That's why we had fucking articles about Ninja coming out and saying, I don't want to be a parent to your kids. Why don't you teach them something so they stop asking me these questions about social justice on my streams? <laughs> Shit like that. We knew it. We're not dumb. Right? And by the way, I'm not saying anything negative about the core gameplay mechanics of Fortnite. I've played it before. I thought it was alright. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It's a unique combination of the Battle Royale formula with the building mechanics of games like Minecraft. And it does actually add a, a cool variety of gameplay to the game. Absolutely it does. I don't like it though. I don't like the building aspect. I thought that the gun gunplay <clears throat> um, and the actual Battle Royale itself was alright. But I always hated the building mechanics. So every time I jumped in and played it, I started cringing whenever someone would build. And I, I don't want to play this anymore. You know, it's just not for me. I like more purist Battle Royale, which is just about the gunplay and surviving and being sneaky and, and survivalist, and not about, oh, I can build a fucking wall and a trampoline and do stupid shit. Okay? So, that being said, by the way, someone said, what do you mean disingenuous? I mean, someone who normally would never make content of that type, who literally went all in for a year to two years just to make money. They didn't care about the content they were pumping out. They knew it had no meaning. All they wanted to do was prey on the attention of children and make a quick buck rather than doing what they actually care about. You know, I tried Fortnite a couple times, told you guys I didn't like it, and moved on. I knew there was money to be had, and I didn't give a fuck. I played what I thought was good, because that's what I'm all about, and that's who I've always been. You guys know that. That's why you're here. Because you know I'm not going to jump on some fucking money-making bandwagon. And I don't, do, I don't, I definitely do not support that kind of behavior, okay? Well, that is a bad take. Well, then you can say it's a bad take. It's your right to say that. I think it's a good take. It's my take. Okay, so anyway, the reason I'm talking about Fortnite today is because the point I wanted to make was Fortnite's popularity is literally based on them biting an idea from other games and making it unique for their game by adding that building mechanic and cartoony, which the other games weren't. They were more hyper-realistic. This game was the only Battle Royale game to have cartoony graphics to attract children. And because the game became so popular, they became the number one game in the world for a while, right? I mean, they have licensing deals with every company. Marvel and DC, every musician, at fucking pop stars, rap stars, movie stars. You know, everything of pop culture is thrown in there. So, 
literally they're rolling in dough to the point where they now own their own game distribution network on PC, the Epic Game Store, right? They're getting exclusivity deals of getting games on the Epic Game Store that will not be anywhere else because they're so rich. They're so rolling in dough with the money of children and their parents buying skins for the last three to four years, okay? So what do they do? Well, let's see. Should we, if we have an idea that we'd like to implement in our game, and by the way, it's not our idea, it's definitely an idea that another major game has done and become ultimately super popular. Should we contact that game dev and say, hey, we'd like to collaborate with you. Let's have a crossover event between our games to make them even more popular. We'd like to give you guys maybe a little bit of a boost. And, uh, you know, because you did something really good that everyone really likes on the internet. So let's collaborate and let's have a, a cool event and, uh, and make everyone happy. Did they do that? No, they did not do that at all. Instead, Epic Games says, let's steal again. <laughs> it worked the first time. We stole someone's idea. It, it made us the, the most virally popular game for kids on the planet. And we're basically rolling in millions to billions of dollars because of it. So let's just do it again. Right? So what do they do? They stole Among Us. Literally. They stole the idea of Among Us. And they're now putting in a new mode in Fortnite called Imposters. That's literally Among Us. Now, apparently, people are saying there will be a few tweaks and differences in this mode from what Among Us really is. They're not going to just carbon copy lift the idea. Then again, if they did, they'd probably be more liable for being sued. Um, they're basically doing what they exactly what they did with Fortnite. They're taking the idea of something that was already popular somewhere else, and they're adding a couple unique spins to it so that they can use the idea without paying anyone royalties for taking the idea. And they are planning to make tons of money on it. They're not even... That's right, White Deer. They're not even subtle about it. They're literally blatantly stealing. They 100% are taking it. There's no... It's not even like, oh, they're trying... No, they didn't even try. This is... They've stolen Among Us and adding a few unique tweaks to claim that it's original when it's not. And they're going to put it in their game to try to make monstrous money. Now, what are they really trying to do? They're trying to steal the audience of Among Us. They already have an audience of Battle Royale, and let's be honest here. Battle Royale is dwindling. Battle Royale is not nearly as popular as it was three, four years ago, right? It was a fad, like all these fads that we've seen. I mean, just in the 13 years that I've been a content creator, we've had the zombie fad, the first-person shooter fad, the motion control fad, the co-op looter shooter fad, the VR fad, and now we've had the Battle Royale fad, and now we're moving into other fads. There's more fads that have, that have kind of happened since then. But you see what I'm saying? These are all fads that last a few years. The games are ultra popular, make tons of money, and then people get tired of it, and they move on to other shit. Epic Games is not making what they used to. At the height of the popularity, they were making insane money. Now they're just making incredibly, ridiculously over-the-top, way more money than we deserve dirty money. But they're still not making the incredible money they were those years when you had guys like Ninja constantly pumping out Fortnite content. In fact, most of the top Fortnite content creators have moved on and don't make content for the game anymore because they're tired of that shit. Okay? So what do they do? Steal someone else. Steal someone else's idea. We got to steal Among Us because Among Us is that white hot popular game from last year. Right? And we just want to take their, their idea and lift it. Now here's the thing. Epic Games is rich now. This is not the situation they were in when they made the original Fortnite. This is a completely different situation. They are one of the biggest, most wealthy game developers on the planet because of kids. Because they literally took kids' money for like four straight years. All right? As if you shouldn't feel bad about that enough, they now decide, well, we know we could collaborate with the makers of Among Us to do an official awesome crossover that people would really enjoy. But we'll just steal the idea instead. Seriously, we'll steal the idea. <laughs> oh, okay. That sounds good. I don't know, that pisses me off. And by the way, the makers of Among Us have already spoken out on social media saying, that's messed up. Like, they're literally like, wow, we can't believe we were not consulted on this. That they're just going to steal our idea that's so popular, that's fucked up. By the way, Among Us is actually not the first game to even have the idea either. But it was the first game to popularize it, okay? So the fact that this is happening is pretty ridiculous that a company that is at the top decides that they're just going to take from others. All right? 
I'm just saying. They definitely could have done a paid collab if they wanted to, but they don't care. We're going to take your idea and make it our own. And now you got to wonder, because Among Us is probably worried. They're like, okay, in the last year, we had some crazy popularity that exploded because of, you know, content creators playing our game and, you know, up to the point where now celebrities and politicians have played Among Us, so it's super popular. But what happens if Among Us now is in Fortnite, a game where a bunch of kids are already playing, will they stop playing Among Us and only play the Imposters version of Fortnite? Right? I don't know. That's a concern I would feel. Are you going to see a gravitation because the Fortnite version of Imposters is the hot new thing? Will Among Us now die out? Will the original die out while the Imposter, literally the Imposter that's named Imposters... Will that become more popular? Right? <laughs> now, Shooter McGavin made an interesting point. He did a super chat and he said, well, aren't you aware that Epic Games is bleeding money, so what you're saying doesn't make any sense? Wrong. Well, here's the thing. You're right, but you're also wrong. Okay? Yes, Epic Games is bleeding money. It has nothing to do with Fortnite. Fortnite is one of the most incredibly popular and profitable games of all fucking time. The reason Epic Games is bleeding money is because of the Epic Games Store. They made a store and they're paying insane amounts of money to get exclusive games on that store. And that's costing them a ridiculous amount of cash. If they weren't doing that, then they wouldn't have this, you know, they, they would actually be one of the most profitable gaming companies in the world. That's their choice. That's management's choice to do that. My point stands, these guys could easily do a paid collaboration, they don't have to steal someone else's idea with the position that they're in in the industry. All right? Your ground is saying, oh, well, they're bleeding money behind the scenes. That's true, but that's a completely unrelated situation. That's because of management decisions of something that has nothing to do with Fortnite. Fortnite is very profitable. That's why they can make the Epic Game Store and bleed money because they have constant money pumping in from Fortnite. Okay? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I feel this is fucked up. My personal take on this they're big enough now. They're not in the situation they were when Fortnite released four or five years ago. They easily, easily could have done a collaboration. They've done it with everyone else. The fact that they don't think that this game studio who made Among Us is important enough to do a collab and instead they're stealing their fucking idea is pretty underhanded and messed up. But the deal is people won't care because guess what? It's kids who play the game. Children won't even understand the situation. They'll just say, ooh, it's Among Us in Fortnite. And they'll run and play it and drop a ton of money into it. So, it is what it is. It's funny because you guys, I know you guys razz me about this. You're like, oh, Phil, but you don't play Fortnite. How do you know? You guys have no idea. I know people who their kids fucking play Fortnite constantly and won't stop dropping money into the game. I personally know people <laughs> in real life who this is the situation. Every time they know that I'm a gamer, that's my job, and they ask me about Fortnite. Every fucking time that I talk to them, it's like, you do realize that Fortnite actually isn't that mainstream popular anymore. It's only kids. It's like, yeah, well, that's all our kids talk about. Really? In 2021? It's all your kids talk about? Yes. This is how crazy virally popular this game is with children. They will not stop talking about it and playing it. It's pretty insane. Anyway, I digress. I think it's a messed up story. I'm curious to see what's going to happen because will there be industry backlash against Epic Games for doing this, or will everyone say, oh, well, it's fair game. I don't know. Okay. All right, guys. Let's now do shout-outs. Full screen no did a super chat and says, talk about today's Pokemon news. I'm not even aware that there's Pokemon news today. That one I missed. When I was checking news stories earlier, I didn't see any news about Pokemon, so I have nothing to talk about in that regard, unless uh, someone else knows what he's talking about. I'm taking a look right now, and I don't see Diddly. Wait, Sword and Shield? Hold on. Oh. I don't see anything. What's the news? All I'm seeing here is that they're claiming that competitive play is going to stay in Sword and Shield while the next two games coming out are not supposed to be focused on competitive play but more just like casual entries into the the franchise. That's all I'm really seeing. So. 
All right. So thank you, full screen no, and then thank you, Shooter McGavin, for that super chat. Always appreciative of those who are adding to the discussion. I feel that Shooter McGavin, even though he was kind of challenging me there, it gave me an opportunity to kind of elaborate on the thought and clarify. So I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chats, guys. Um, tips. Uh, oh my God. Well, that was revolting. Shout out to Drink Like There's No Tomorrow, who tipped me $5, said, are you still trying to do a completionist as far as you can run? There's still a few fun side missions you didn't do. I'll send you an updated list. Thank you, and I did see the list. It's in my inbox. I absolutely will review that and possibly use that as a guide uh, to do other stuff. I would like to do the meaningful missions, and I also, like I said, I want to do the follower quests, so I hope I can get him to trigger. Guess we'll see what we can do today. Grow Channel Idea tipped me $10. It says, after each playthrough you do a review, why not split that into its own video? I guess it's a lot more people will search for reviews than playthroughs. No need for editing. Just a new thumbnail, and you have a niche, as most reviewers don't play the whole game. Um, I mean, I could. I used to do full-on reviews. Of course, as you know, I became a full-time streamer in 2017 when YouTube kind of put an end to that uh, by demonetizing the channel I was doing those on for absolutely no reason. Um, <laughs> so... Now you're right, in the final part of every single game that I play, usually while the credits are rolling, I kind of do a review. Now my reviews are nothing like they used to be. My reviews used to be super in-depth, cover every facet of every freaking game, and compare it to other games, and basically give it a, a number score. I don't do that anymore. What I essentially do is I summarize my thoughts about the game during the credits, and I tell you if I liked it or not, and the situations in which you might or might not like that game. But I definitely don't go into the level of detail I used to. And quite frankly, I like this, and here's why. When I do my year-end series, no one knows what it's going to be. Since I'm not giving each individual game I play a number score anymore, now people have no idea what my Game of the Year awards countdown will be. And I like that because it allows me to have surprises at the end of the year that normally I wouldn't have. I like this idea. I thank you for it. I'll have to think about it because essentially it would mean splitting the final part into a very short video. Uh, where I would basically summarize my thoughts. I could do this, and I would like to have everyone else's take on it and say, would you like me to do that? Would you like me, when the credits roll of the game, say, okay, hold on, we're going to make a separate video for the end, and then do a separate video and say, summary, summary review, blah, 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 or something like that, right? I'd be, I mean, I'd consider doing it. We have to think about how we could handle it, right? Okay. All right, guys, anyone else have anything? Because I've used the bathroom pretty badly. So unless anyone else has anything else, I think I'm going to go run and use the bathroom. When we come back, it is Fallout New Vegas. I guess not. Guys, let's take a break. I'll be back shortly with Fallout New Vegas. See you in a few.